I think that for me, what's obviously unique, of course, is that most instruments, of course, you have the talking drum and a lot of frame drums, especially the Kenjira. Uh, you can bend the pitch by putting uh, pressure on the head and so on. But for me, what's unique about the Udu is that you're controlling the airflow of the instrument always. Uh, controlling the airflow through that instrument creates a melodic characteristic that most instruments don't have. Percussion instruments, I should say. I'm sorry, we're talking specifically percussion instruments here. So by virtue of, of controlling the airflow through the instrument, you're bringing in a whole personality and characteristic that most conventional percussion instruments don't have. I believe every percussion instrument has its, obviously has its own voice and obviously the way that you learn how to uh, let the sound out, um, you know, you, you can create music out of that by simply high, middle, low sounds and so on. But with the Udu, it's very, uh, very, in, uh, an, uh, it's unique in the sense that you have this characteristic of being able to work with the airflow and it's, easily manipulated in regard to changing the melodic characteristics. So the percussionists now, even if they're not a trained melodic percussionist, someone that's come to percussion through, uh, say, playing any mallet instruments, they can actually create a melody that could be counter melody to the main melody of the piece. So that's very interesting. Um, and that becomes very obvious right away with that instrument. And then, of course, you have the, the beautiful connection that it has with the obvious, which is the surface sounds, you know, using all different parts of your hand, you know, creating all these different beautiful textures and so on that complement the melody. But for me, I think that if I, <laughs> I'm trying my best to find the words to describe how unique the instrument is, but I think, I think that that's it. I think that it's that you can easily create melody by manipulating the airflow through the drum um, of course, at the same time that you're using the different parts of your hand to create the different textures from the side, of, you know, the shell of the drum itself. What the Udu has done uh, for my musical voice and what it brings to my music and the work that I do, um, if I was to say one word, I would say depth. Um, I have used the Udu drum now in my career in every conceivable environment. Uh, there's no limitation. I have found in my career, in the kind of music that I do, um, uh, both with uh, musical environments with no voice, and then working with voice, and then obviously the connection between the two, um, what, what I find is that it's never not appropriate. Sometimes a skinned instrument is not appropriate. At least that's my perspective now. I guess, you know, obviously that's subjective. But I have found that there are times where I will be called in to do a project and I will hear the music and right away I will know that a skinned instrument, even with the lightest touch, with even um, using maybe just the tones of the instrument, I find that sometimes it's just too heavy. Whereas the Udu finds itself in the music Probably the most valuable lesson I was ever given at a very young age from my great uncle, who was the man that was responsible for introducing me to the world of, of, of drumming uh, to begin with. Um, he said, it's, it's, he said at, and I was very young, so he said, you probably won't understand this, but he said, it's not necessarily that you are heard, but what's important is that you are felt. And I think that with the Udu especially, I have found that it has become such an intricate voice in certain musics where a uh, conventional drum such as a, um, you know, a, a djembe or a conga, you know, a, any skinned instrument per se, would be just too heavy or not appropriate. So uh, that's what I mean by it, add, it has added such a depth in my voice because um, I'm utilizing the knowing of knowing that it's going to find itself in the music sonically and it's not going to deter from anything. And in some cases, it's almost as if it doesn't exist sonically, but it definitely exists in the spirit of the piece. I remember this one uh, scenario, if you will, one event where I was performing uh, with a sax player. It was just he and I, and I was playing the Udu drum. And it wasn't a, a boisterous you know, rhythm. It was just a very easy rhythm 
kind of percolating, if you will. But I was using a lot of low end and I was pulling the sound out ever so gently, sort of like a glissando kind of a thing. And I watched several of the people in the back of this club. They could not, for the life of them, figure out where the sound was coming from. It was as if they, they were uncontrollably controlled by the sound, you know? So the, the sound, because of the, because I think of, of the earthiness uh, of the instrument, obviously because it's clay, um, the warmth of the sound, uh, I think that it has a way of getting into our rhythm or our, 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 our center. Um, and any time I've ever performed with the Udu drum, it doesn't matter if it's an intense rhythm, it, you know, meaning fast, uh, or if I'm using a lot of shell, you know, maybe with fingertips or, or such, or rubbing. The, the sound is, is so warm that it really affects people when they listen to it. Working with children as I do, uh, uh, working with families, um, with uh, multiply challenged individuals, uh, when I bring the Udu out, uh, I find that they're quickly drawn to the Udu, um, not only because of the, of the warmth of the instrument, but because of the playfulness of it. What's really beautiful about any percussion instrument in general, uh, anyone can come to it. The Udu, uh, I think because of the, the physical shape of it, um, I think because you hold it, um, I find that children, even young children, I mean, um, I'll just sit on the floor with them with it, especially toddlers, you know, they'll crawl over to it and uh, immediately just start becoming very playful. But children really, they, they, they jump in and they, and they realize the playfulness of, of the instrument right away. And I think it's very welcoming to them. Uh, they're not huge instruments. Um, and like I said before, you know, they're holding it. So it's a very affectionate kind of instrument because it's literally on their person. They're not sitting next to it or maybe just holding it in their hand or, or maybe little to shake it, but they're actually hugging it. So the connection is, is really quite a beautiful thing.